Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Kyuyaku Megami Tensei. Previously, we defeated the Minotaur, and we've mostly wrapped up all of our business in the Tower of Daedalus, the first area of this six-area game. I, I don't know why it said a six-area game. There are six areas in this game, but that's not, like, an adjective. Whatever, it's fine. Um, so yeah, we gotta wrap up some stuff here. As you can see, there's a shit ton of this floor we have not explored yet. And it's actually probably larger than you think just looking at that partial map that I have completed here. Uh, that being said, I did reach like a weird like snapping point, uh, kind of kind of wrapping up this part of the floor of the uh, of the Tower of Daedalus, where I, I kind of realized I I should probably get over my weird completionist mapping uh, mindset, where like I want to walk over every tile just to have the map look nice or whatever. Because honestly, in this game, uh, in particular, a lot of the nooks and crannies that you can go down in these various dungeon corridors don't actually really lead to anything. Um, <laughs> so, uh, just to save your time and to save mine, I, uh, I figured, you know what, I might as well, um, I might as well just start utilizing, like, online maps and stuff for this game and just, uh, you know, kind of make sure if I'm exploring part of a dungeon, I'm doing so with a purpose, and I, I kind of have something to show off or whatever. I'm obviously not going to just beeline from place to place, because that's that's no fun. You want to you wanna smell the roses a little bit and kind of kind of hit all the fun stuff, but uh, I'm not going to be walking over any tile anymore just because, like, nobody wants to see me do that just to just so I can personally be satisfied and know that I walked over every tile. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little silly. So, yeah, I'm, I'm using maps now, just be aware of that. And uh, eagle-eyed viewers may notice it just because sometimes you, you might see me, like, pause mid-walk, uh, and it might not look like there's a reason for that, but the reason is actually that I'm looking over at my phone just to make sure that I'm not, you know, getting lost or going down some weird side corridor that I don't need to go down. <laughs> um... And yeah, like any long pauses, like what you just saw there, I, I will uh, I will cut out so I can, you know, I can uh, not waste your time. But yeah, uh, as you can see, this uh, is a larger, much larger floor than the other parts of the tower so far. And actually, it does extend further east. Um, it, it is in fact, like it is in fact just a. Um, wider area than the ones that we've gone through so far um and yeah it's it's mostly empty i mean there's there's stuff obviously uh and actually one one thing i just wanted to show off so if you actually kind of go a little bit further east than you probably should your first time traveling through this area you can go through like this weird back door way into the minotaur room uh and it's kind of just a in my opinion, a fairly unpleasant way to stumble into the first boss fight of the game. Uh, kind of funny, I, I have to imagine that there's been a few people that were like, exploring, oh my god, it's Sans. He's telling us about the second area of the game, the end. But yeah, I, I have to imagine that there's a few like kids playing this game back in the day, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna avoid this part of the map because I think like the the boss fight's there, and then they stumble into the boss fight anyways because this game is weird and has two entrances to the boss room. Uh, at least in this instance, I think this is actually the only boss room that's like that. Don't quote me on that though. Uh, but yeah, as the skeleton man explained to us, we need to go to the Sky City of Bien, which is the second area of the game. Now this is the Corridor of Valhalla, which is actually the third area of the game, which is really weird, but we need to go through here, or at least we have to go through a little, a little, uh, a little section of the, of, uh, the Valhalla Corridor before we can get to the Sky City. For those of you who remember, uh, me showing off the, the overall map of the whole, like, Demon World dungeon, uh, at, in, in I think the first episode, I, I definitely showed it off. Um, you may have noticed that there's just part of the map that was, like, floating above the rest of it, and that is the Sky City, as you probably could imagine. Um, and yeah, we just don't have money, which is sad, so we're gonna make do with what we have for now. Um, but yeah. Also, keep this in mind. This game actually does a pretty good job of, of uh, you know giving you a good smattering of NPCs to discover that, that give you pretty helpful hints, at least to uh, kind of give you a idea of what to look out for, and that guard will not let us go through that door just yet. 
so that's a shame. Um, but yeah, uh, someone actually commented and asked me like, hey, why, why aren't you using Recarm to revive your party members and you're just wasting money at the healer? Because, you know, it's a lot cheaper to heal the MP from failed Recarms than it is to just completely revive your party members. And I never thought about that, actually. That was just me just not being smart and not really thinking about that. Um, so I try to do that more, but also old habits die hard, and I, I tend, honestly, like, I just kind of tend to be that person who is just like, eh, fuck it, I, I have, like, an, like, an hour I can just grind out, whatever the fuck, and sometimes I play RPGs not the most efficiently, um, just cause, you know, like I said, old habits die hard. Which I think might surprise people just with how I edit my Let's Plays, and I'm like, kind of anal about everything being like super efficient and stuff but um yeah no i don't know um there's a there's a lot of stuff that i uh and also this is a, just another entrance uh between the tower of daedalus area of the game and uh, the valhalla corridor just wanted to show that off uh no but yeah i am i am like a lot of people a creature of habit when it comes to a lot of, uh, like, games that I'm familiar with, or genres I'm familiar with, like RPGs and stuff, so. Like, even, um, I remember when I was playing, like, Digital Devil Saga and stuff, uh, like, there would be stuff that I would grind for, and after I got it, I was like, you know, I really didn't need this, but, like, I just felt like I should have this, and I kind of wanted it, so, <laughs> uh, whatever. Gasp. Okay, so this... Like, I'm all, I'm all for one for not judging a man for his insecurities, but... I don't know, personally speaking, if I see a guy standing at, like, a gateway... And he has a spear in the shape of a crescent moon... I'm not gonna fuck with that guy. That guy does not need a shield to look intimidating. I, I, I think he's good with just the spear. And also, fortunately, Hell is full of uh, various ASM artists that will help us fall asleep, and uh, we will wake up all the way back up to the Tower of Daedalus in the town of Mykon. I don't know if that's, like, a magical hypnosis sleep that will make you do that. Or actually, probably what's really happening is that he's, like, hypnotizing us to walk all the way back up. Or we're falling asleep and teleporting to this weird, specific, like, oddly specific corner, actually, of, uh, of this town. But, who knows? Hell works in mysterious ways. I guess I should technically be calling it the Demon World, but that just kind of makes me feel pretentious. And there you go. I'm taking that commenter's advice and <laughs> to heart, or at least trying. And I'm like, yeah, I should <laughs> should probably revive instead. Whoops. Now this is embarrassing, though. I was like, yeah, let me not revive Stolas and and use Recarm for for you know being more efficient with my money. And then I accidentally just mashed A one too many times, and I ended up reviving Stolas uh, and wasting like 200 mock anyway. So, whoops. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Old habits die hard, that's for sure. So if you if if you were paying attention as you uh, went down the Tower of Daedalus, you may have noticed that on the third floor, uh, you wouldn't have run into an elevator at all, and there was also like a weird, oddly like four tile shape uh, like hole in the ground or something. Uh, and that's because that's like a weird secret area where the goblin keeps all of his stolen treasure. Uh, guarded by this weird mini-boss just called BUG in all caps. Um, I cannot stand this thing's animation because what it reminds me of is like, it, it's like if someone drew a boar in MS Paint and then just like really fast was using the hotkey to do the like flip vertical thing. I don't know if people really get what I'm talking about, but just like, it... It looks like a, a, a weird, dumb drawing that's just being, like, fucked around with an image editor is basically what I'm trying to get at. Uh, but yeah. 
He ain't too much to worry about. He has a lot of health, though, as you can see. I think if you feel like burning the MP, you, you can actually, like, probably uh, deal with him better, but I did not feel like putting up with that. Slowly but surely, we are gaining more levels. I actually haven't really fucked around with Demon Fusion yet, and uh, part of that is just because, uh, hey, as it turns out, um, Nakajima being behind in levels means that uh, don't have a lot of options yet, and as I've already griped about, this game doesn't give you a lot of options in the first place in terms of Demon Fusion, so... Yeah, we'll just have to make do with our uh, with our assortment of demons for now, and we found the shield, so that's good. But yeah, I mean we're 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 doing pretty good for where we're at. We're, we have, I believe, mostly a full a full party of uh, or like a, a full stock of demons. I mean, obviously we have a full party, as you can see on the screen. But honestly, yeah, it is one of those things too, where like even if you don't have the most powerful demons in the world, I, I think I've already made this point. It's kind of nice just to have meat shields. Just making sure that your human characters aren't always taking the hits. There is strength in numbers. And yeah, I probably should be using Mapara more. Kind of hard though too, because like also, hey, like I like I said, like I'm using like maps on my phone and shit now. Man, I have to say, though, sometimes when you're, like, looking around for, like, maps and shit for these old Megaton games in particular, it's just really funny. Like, you'll be... you'll end up going down weird rabbit holes where, like, you find, like, mid-90s Megaton fan sites that have so clearly been abandoned because, like, you look at, like, the little news sidebars they have and it's like, Nocturne got announced, and it's like, oh, oh god, this is old. <laughs> um... But yeah, a lot, a lot of those, uh, a lot of those old like Japanese Megaton fan sites that I've like stumbled across just looking for resources for stuff that is in English. Um, they, they have some cool stuff on there, from like item and spell lists to like cool overworld maps or dungeon maps and stuff like that that just isn't really available on uh, English Megaton sites, sadly. I, I wish more people had enough interest to kind of take the time to bring that stuff over. So actually, our... that weird smurf guy brings up a very valid point. So, one thing I should probably clarify is that this first Tower of Daedalus area in the game is actually the only one that we're gonna go through where we just go through a area and then we fight a boss at the end and that's it. Every other area in the game has like a I don't want to call it a side quest because they're mandatory they're like mandatory towards progress, uh, but they have like a tiny little quest associated with them where you need to get a specific item that allows you to beat the boss of the area. Uh, as soon as you get into a dungeon, I believe in all except for one case, you have like you could just walk all the way through and get to the boss. Uh, but they always have some sort of, like, skill or special trait about them that makes them unbeatable until you get a specific item, so. Yeah, and once again, they're just coming out and saying that uh, Medusa is the one in charge of the uh, Sky City. And uh, actually, fun fact for those of you who have played Shin Megami Tensei IV, uh, the fact that you descend a tower in that game and you end up fighting... Minotaur and then Medusa right after is actually a, a, a cute little reference to the uh, first two bosses of this game. Kind of kind of a fun little fact there. That SMT4 Medusa design is just awful though. Ugh. At least Apocalypse changed it up. I actually really like the, uh, I mean we're leaving right away, but from the glimpse that you heard, I, I really like the music. Um, in, in BN. It's, it's, like, really upbeat and fun. Honestly, like, I, I, I feel, I feel like a lot of people watching this Let's Play have actually left comments that are just kind of like, man, this, like, this music is pretty good, or at least, like, I've seen a few people, I think, reference it just to, like, maybe on my Discord or, to, like, to me on Twitter, but I, I definitely know I've gotten a YouTube comment or two commenting on it as well, but, like, yeah, this game's music is really, really fucking catchy. It's really good stuff. 
and just because Nakajima is still kind of running behind, I, I figured I would buy armor for him first, because I think Yumiko is actually, you know, in a pretty good spot right now. So, you know, kind of trying to uh, <laughs> cover up the weak link of the two. <laughs> um, he's catching up slowly but surely. It won't be long. And I actually can't remember in my footage what I'm doing at this point. Okay, yeah, we're just going back through. He is very insecure about that shield. Get it together, Gar. You're better than that. Yeah, just, just listen to that music. That shit slaps. Ah, yes, Mega Planaria, my favorite Undertale song. So this is very unnecessary, but I thought I would show it off, and I don't know why I was having so much trouble selecting that magic spell from that menu. These things are very weak to fire, as you can see. I, it's weird. They actually, like, are not that powerful, and, like, it's easy just to kill them with physical attacks. But yeah, like, they are very susceptible to fire for whatever reason. I guess because they're, like, living plants, it looks like. But yeah. Actually, that's one thing that, um... I don't know if I've commented yet, but but one of my my main takeaways from my first playthrough I did of this game, just like, you know, playing it privately, um, was how taken aback I was to see damage in the triple digits, because so much of this game is just like, oh yeah, the enemy takes two damage, you know? Um, and I actually really like that about not only this game, but just like RPGs of this time period, because it's like, do we really need everything like Final Fantasy style being like, oh, you take... 12,600 damage or whatever, and it's like, er, er, fucking, yeah, uh, that was not a real number that FF uses, it was more like 1,260, because they always cap off at 9,999, but, yeah, I kind of, I kind of dig the, uh, the, like, lower number scale, just because it, it feels a little more, like, I, I guess kind of grounded and not as flashy, um, perhaps overly so. That being said, I will be a total hypocrite in admitting that, like, when you get those, like, really good sequential attacks going off in Final Fantasy, where, like, you just see, like, five 9,999s in a row, it, it gets me pretty hype, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bullshit. I mean, those big numbers are there for a reason, like, it, it's, like, proven that seeing, like, stuff like that pop up in games, like excites the weird lizard parts of our brain enough to, like, make make RPGs and stuff like that become addictive. So, the bigger the numbers, the better. But, yeah, I, I kind of do like the novelty of, like, doing 12 damage to an enemy instead of, like, 1,200. Looks like the uh, fan translator ran into a character limit there, but oh well. It's fine. Kind of a weird uh, U-shape that we've uh, we've gone through in this little first part of the dungeon here. And as you can see, we've we've already run into our first pallet swap enemy. <laughs> kind of unfortunate, but I guess that's just kind of how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Nothing really too exciting about these. They can kind of gang up on you and, yeah, do do that, but they're not the worst. Oh yeah, I guess that is worth pointing out that, um, you know, kind of like you expect from a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, other SMT games, you can use Hama, which is a light-based elemental spell, or I guess technically an X spell elemental spell. It's light, like, let's come the fuck on for a second, it's, it's the light element, I don't care what anyone says. Um, and it, it's highly effective against undead enemies like this.
But yeah, that actually is just a, a, a cute little detail I, I always liked, uh, and uh, I think I referenced it in the uh, Shin Megami Tensei 1 Let's Play I do too. But um, just kind of over time, the original idea of the light and dark spells have kind of been lost, because um, the reason light is called expel, actually, is because um, you're actually expelling, like undead creatures from, like, this realm sort of deal, like, like you're using, like, a spell to, like, seal them away from, from this dimension or whatever, whereas, like, the death spell is straight up just, like, oh, you're, you're using, like, necrotic magic to, like, kill them right away. Um, I don't know, just kind of a, a cute little difference there that I, I feel like most modern Megaton games, that's not even the thing that people talk about anymore. And I guess the reason that that kind of played into um, gameplay stuff in uh, in some SMT games, where if you try doing an uh, like an expel attack on a human enemy, it just won't work because they belong to this realm. Like you can't banish humans to a different dimension when when they're like, or like I, I guess not banish, but like expel them back to a different dimension because they're from this dimension. So you know that doesn't make sense intrinsically. Cute little like you know, ludonarrative stuff like that, to, to use the big game critic word. Thanks, Banksy. Always appreciate that. Man, I, I, I saw Into the Spider-Verse, and there is a Banksy joke in that. I'm not going to spoil it for those of you who want to see it yet. But, like, there is a Banksy joke in that that, like, took me aback and actually kind of made me feel old because I kind of realized that, um... Like, the, uh, the, the jokes that they make in kids' movies to keep the adults and the audience entertained, like, those jokes are for, like, people from my age bracket now. Like, those are millennial jokes being made. And it's like, oh god, I'm not getting any younger. But yeah, Spider-Verse is good. Highly recommend. Another dead end. Kind of like the, the, the weird little squishy sound effect that happens when you when you run into a wall in this game. I took my sweet time deciding my level up. I actually feel like I, I've been very, very careful with my level ups. Like, just, that's not something I'm noticing when I'm playing, but just looking back through this footage. Oh god, goblins again. Um, but yeah, just, just going back through and, like, watching myself, like, decide what stats I want to level up, like, I think I'm almost thinking about it too hard, but, eh, it's probably better to think about things like that too hard than, you know, kind of be gung-ho about it, so. So, I like that message a lot for calling this entire dungeon a palace, because I am sorry, but this fucking... This dungeon does not qualify as a palace unless you have, like, the worst sense of architecture or, like, interior design. This is not a palace. I refuse to believe it's a palace. It's a fucking dungeon. Or, like, a series of dungeons. Maybe, like, a... Like, if you want to think about them as, like, six palaces, like, stapled together. But honestly, not even, because, like, we're in a floating, sit like, sky city right now. And I kind of feel like that already means this isn't a palace, but whatever. Semantics. Alright, so we got to the second boss of the area. It's not actually Medusa, so we're going to be fighting Spirit Skeleton here. Uh, it's actually a squad of four, which is kind of fucked up. He hits hard. You're going to have a bad time. There's just no way around it. So I went into auto battle just because I, I kind of felt, you know, a little cocky. And as you can see, I paid for it. Wasn't paying attention. Yumiko ended up dying. This is a really tough fight, folks. It, it's just, I don't... I don't know. Like, as you can see, I'm, I'm struggling here. We managed to take one of them down, but at what cost? You know, may, maybe this is Nakajima's time to shine. Maybe maybe we can get that experience gap a little, little evened out. 
you know, Nakajima dies first boss fight, and, uh, you know, Yumiko dies the second. That's just kind of how it goes. In fact, it's really weird. Like, the skeleton is, like, so important of a boss that actually, like, it, it covers up the magic menus and stuff. It, it, it's kind of a weird effect. But yeah, we managed to take him down, so that's good. But yeah, I, I really need to get the fuck back and, uh, and heal up, that's for sure. But I'm not gonna do that, because, like I said, I'm a cocky asshole. And I was like, why don't I... Instead of instead of doing the responsible thing and, you know, going back to heal and revive my party members, what if me and Cerberus just keep going? You know, just 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 a little little two man squad going on here. We got jewels. We can we can heal up. We got we got the weird frog man, the gnome, and that Lemurian thing. So yeah, you know we got we got the full party. All right, so the, the real mini boss of this area is actually this Medusa Shadow, which actually, minor spoiler, but th there's just some of these like that are strewn about the dungeon that if you walk onto specific tiles, you'll run into them. This is the only mandatory one, though. There are two others that are kind of out of the way and are optional fights, but yeah, this is the one that you have to fight no matter what. It actually, uh, also hits pretty hard. It, it is a true mini-boss, I'll say that. But yeah, I, I figured that I might as well try autoing my way through this one, too. And I, I thought that we were at a point where we could make that work, and, um... As you can see, not going well. I was kind of surprised that Hecate didn't fucking, like, just bite the bullet right away. Uh, very impressive, actually, for the little frog guy. Like he's gonna eat shit in a second here, I'm pretty sure, but you know. He he got some he got some hits in. Maybe. I actually think he might be so weak that like any physical attacks that even connected probably just did like no damage, because that is a thing in this game. Um, but you know. That's just how it goes. That's how Kyuyaku <laughs> Excuse me, that's how Kyuyaku Megami Tensei works to reference a contemporary meme that I'm sure will date this video horribly. I say like I didn't put a Sans Fortnite Remix meme in here, but, you know, whatever. I feel like Sans and Fortnite are kind of timeless in like a weird fucked up way. I like kinda just, like, I just wanna let everyone know that I just really like thought for a, for a long ass time about the thing I just said and, man, Current culture is fucking weird. Anyways, we died. I hope you enjoyed this weird clusterfuck of an episode. Have a good night. I'll see you next time.